we just got finished spending a week at Disney World and we're on our way back home to North Carolina and we spent the night on a boat, a boat B&B. &B. And it reminded me of the story of Jesus and his disciples and the stilling of the storm. We 21st century folk have a hard time understanding the perspective of our ancestors in the first century when it comes to the weather. We have the Weather Channel that explains everything in great scientific detail so that we understand the dynamics of cold fronts and warm fronts and what happens when they collide. But in the first century world, they didn't have the Weather Channel. And so they interpreted major weather events as conflicts on spiritual levels, conflicts between the forces of good and evil. In our story from Mark 4, Jesus and his disciples have gone out on a boat on the Sea of Galilee. Now, if the Weather Channel were there at that time, they would explain the fact that the Sea of Galilee is several hundred feet below sea level, and just 30 miles away is Mount Hermon, which rises to a majestic height of 9,200 feet above sea level. That's almost a two mile difference in elevation in just 30 miles. Around the Sea of Galilee are canyons or ravines that act as wind tunnels with those cold fronts coming down off Mount Hermon. And when that wind comes through those ravines, it builds up force so that you have major wind events on the Sea of Galilee. In fact, if we were to literally translate the Greek word that Mark uses to describe this storm, it would be mega seismic. Not just of seismic proportions, but mega seismic proportions. A couple of decades ago, archaeologists unearthed a fishing boat in the region of Capernaum where Jesus was about 27 feet long. That's not even a first down on a football field. It was about six feet wide and four and a half feet deep. Can you imagine the disciples and Jesus in a storm of mega seismic proportions on a little fishing boat? You can imagine why it was that the disciples were feeling the way they were and the fear that they had. So they see themselves as caught in the crossfire of a major battle between spiritual forces of good and evil and they are hanging on for dear life. When one of them happens to glance back to the stern of the boat and sees Jesus asleep, they go to him and wake him and say, Master, Rabbi, how can you sleep at a time like this? We are fighting for our lives. Now, Mark doesn't say what Jesus does. We generally picture Jesus as standing up in the boat, raising his arms, and shouting to the wind and the waves to be quiet. But I'm not sure that's the right interpretation. I picture Jesus sitting up in the boat, half asleep, and saying quietly to the wind and the waves, you kids, hush. And then he turns to the disciples and says, why are you still afraid? Do you still not have faith? It's interesting to know that in Mark's gospel, he uses two different words for fear. The first is delos. Delos is the Greek word that is usually translated cowardly, timid, easily frightened. That's the word that Mark uses when Jesus asks the disciples, why are you afraid? as they turn to one another and say, who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. They are terrified. Now, the Greek word Mark uses there is phobos. It means filled with awe to the point 
of being terrified. They are amazed at the power of this man they are called Rabbi. That might be 2,000 years ago, but the application is as fresh today as it was then. The church is certainly going through a storm. People are leaving the church and the pandemic has seemed to make it worse. And people are beginning to wonder where Jesus is. Is he asleep? Is he going to come back? Has he forgotten about us? Does he not care? We in our personal lives also have found wind and waves getting stronger. It's good to be reminded that the one that we call Lord is Lord of all the storms of life and has not forgotten us. If we're going to be afraid, may we be terrified at the power and the glory of the one who is in control and has authority over all of the storms of life.